Graduate for Students, Mr. Lawrence here, and today we are going to be graphing in slope intercept form. Uh, second period, this will be a little bit of review for you because you saw um, the graphing on the uh, graphing calculators. Now, eighth period, I didn't get you for the extra hour yet, so you didn't get to see that yet. So this will be new to eighth period people, but uh, it's really not that difficult. Let's just get right to it. Now, remember we were solving for the nth term, right? We had to write an equation. We'd have a series like 7, 4, 1, negative 2, negative 5, and then we made this, oops, I'm not in that right, correct mode. And we have uh, this t-table, right? Or this input-output table, as I've been calling it. And we fill in the numbers here, 7 and 4 and 1 and negative 2 and negative 5. And then we go in search of our first differences. So we see that's minus 3, and that's minus 3, and in fact, it's minus 3 all the way across, right? So we take that negative 3 idea, and we go negative 3n. And then we do our comparison line. We know our answer for the nth term is going to have a negative 3n in it, but we might have to add 10. We might have to minus 6. I'm not sure. And we multiply these x numbers all by n, oh, excuse me, all by negative 3. So 1 times negative 3, 2 times negative 3, 3 times negative 3, 4 times negative 3, 5 times negative 3. And then we compare up. I'll see if you can see this color. Yeah, I think it shows up okay. How do I turn negative 3 into 7? Well, one way to think about this is if you're on a number line, okay, you can think. How far am I from zero? Well, negative three is three units away, right? And seven, of course, is seven units away. So therefore, they must be 10 units away from each other. So I'll add 10, okay? Same thing with negative six and negative four. I add 10, add 10. Every time I'm adding 10. Sounds like everybody clap your hands. Everybody, every time I'm adding 10. So the nth term becomes negative 3n plus 10. Now my equation that we've been writing is f of x equals negative 3x plus 10. The only thing we're going to be doing differently with these equations is we're not going to use f of x. We're going to use y. f of x usually means the same thing as y. It's just reserved for functions. And not every line we're going to graph has to be a function. Almost all of them are, but many of them aren't. Okay? The only ones that aren't are vertical lines, and I'll explain more about that later. So, we're going to learn how to graph this equation. So, let's get down to it. Now, I must tell you, this, is, this only works when y is alone. Hey, Dalton, did I just say this only works when y is alone? Kevin, when does this work? That's right, only when y is alone. Chris, are you listening? It only works when y is alone. Oh, I think I forgot to tell you, Veronica, this only works when y is alone. Okay, I think I've said it enough. Hopefully you've written it down. Y must be alone. When we have y all by itself for a linear equation, we like to call it slope-intercept form. And hold on a second. Let me title that slope intercept form. And it looks like this, y equals mx plus b. You're going to see this an awful lot. Now, this is really easy to graph, okay? But I'm going to explain what everything is. First of all, this b represents what we call the y-intercept. The y-intercept. What do you suppose a y-intercept is? Well, you see the y-axis here, this vertical line? That's the y-axis. A y-intercept would be the place on a line. Hold on, let me get an actual line here, because that's not a line. Anybody tell me why that's not a line? What do you think, John? Why isn't that a line? Because it doesn't go forever. I need arrowheads on both sides. That's very good, John. All right, so I've got this nice line going on here. If this line goes like this, my y-intercept is right here. In this case, that would be 9. If the line is here, then the y-intercept 
would be whatever the value of this point is. Of course, the line doesn't have to go upward. It could go down like that. could be really steep going down, and in which case the y-intercept is here. So if I have y alone in my equation, I can tell the y-intercept just by looking at the constant, a number that doesn't have an x next to it. Okay, that's the y-intercept. By the way, they use y, or they use b for y-intercept because we're going to begin with it. All right, I'll demonstrate that in a minute. All right, now, m is something we call the slope. Okay, the slope. The slope is defined as the rise over the run. Now, before you go, wait a minute, I don't get all this slope stuff. It's really easy. Rise is a measure of how high something goes. Run is a measure of how long it goes. So if I had a slope of, say, 2 thirds, then let me get a graph over here. If I was at this point here, and my slope were 2 thirds, well, I would go up 1, 2, and then I would run 1, 2, 3. And I'd get another point. I'd go up 1, 2, and I'd go 1, 2, 3 to the right, and there's another point. And if you look, you can see a line starting to form, can't you? Now, if my slope were, my slope were, uh, say, four, I would turn it into a fraction. And so if I'm doing, let me change colors, if I'm doing a slope from this point right here, I'm going to rise one, two, three, four, and then run one. I'd rise one, two, three, four, and run one. Okay, so that would be a different kind of line. Now, of course, the slope could be negative. If the slope were, say, negative three-fourths. Okay. So if I'm going to do a slope of negative three-fourths, and I'm going to go from this point here this time, all right, one of them is going to be negative. Now, it doesn't matter which one. I could do negative three over positive four, or I could do three over negative four. I can't do both. So watch what happens. I'll do negative three. I'll do this one first. I'll go one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. There you go. Now, let me get a more of a graph going on here because I can't do the other one. I chose the same with the one I chose. So let me get another piece of graph paper here. See if I can't get it to line up just right. Let's see, almost. There we go, that's pretty close. All right, so remember I was at this point right here, and I said I could use this slope as well. All right, well, I'm going to use that slope. I'm going to rise 1, 2, 3, and then run 1, 2, 3, 4. Notice I went in the negative direction. Rise 1, 2, 3, run 1, 2, 3, and 4 would be just about there. And notice every single one of those points is on the same line. So when you have a negative slope, you either make the numerator negative or the denominator, but you don't make both negative. If I go from here, these three are on the same line, these three are on the same line, etc. Okay, so let's get back to actually how we do this. All right, so here I have the equation y equals 1 half x minus 4. Is this y alone? Absolutely. So I am in slope-intercept form because it's a linear equation. I know this is b. b equals negative 4. I know that this is my slope, m, or the slope is 1 half. First thing I do is I go to the y-axis and I go down 4. Why? Because the b is negative. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
There we go. Now, I use my slope of 1 over 2, which means I rise 1, run 2. Okay, so we are going to rise 1, run 1, 2. From that next point, I can rise 1, run 2. And there I have a pretty line. I'm going to go ahead and draw that line. All right. There we go. Now, I want to point out something else to you. Uh, if I do m equals 1 half, I can change both signs and still have the same fraction, right? Negative divided by a negative is a positive. Watch what happens if I use this for my slope. I'm going to go rise negative 1 and run negative 2. Look at that, I end up on the same line. Go down 1, left 2, I end up on the same line. So I can change both signs and go the other direction. All right, let's try this one. By the way, it, it stands to, uh, reasons to understand that you need some graph paper for Monday. Okay, if you don't have graph paper, that's fine. I can show you how to do it without graph paper. But if you have it, it'll be easier. Okay, equation two, y equals 5x plus 1. Is y alone? Yep, y is alone. Okay, so my y-intercept is the point zero, 1. And my slope is 5, but I want it as a fraction, so I'll write it as 5 over 1. Oh, my goodness, I just made a mistake. 5 over 1. All right. So I go, that's a colon, by the way. It kind of looks like a letter I. It's supposed to be a colon. So I plot the beginning, the y-intercept. 0, 1 is right here. And then I rise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I run 1. Now look, I'm going to run out of room. One, two, three, four. I could kind of guess, which is okay, or I could change both signs and go negative five, negative one. And then I could go down one, two, three, four, five, and back one. Now, I only need two points to draw the line, but as a human, I tend to make mistakes and not be perfect. And so therefore, one, two, three, four, five, back one. I like to use three or four points so I can get a prettier line. It'll be more accurate. Pretty is not the right word, but it'll be more accurate. By the way, if I was going to, hold on one second here. Oh, that doesn't look good. There we go. Okay. If I were going to uh, do that guesstimate I was talking about, up one, two, three, four, five, and then over one, look at that, I'd still be on the line. Okay, there you go. Let's try a couple more. I know it's a little bit of a long video, but that's okay. I check to see if y is long. Sure it is. My y-intercept is the point zero six. I plot it, one, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Okay, my slope is negative two-thirds, and remember, I either make the two negative or the three negative, not both. Okay, so go down one, two, right one, two, three. Go down two, one, two, three to the right. I've got three points. I'm ready to draw my line. Now, when you draw your lines, you will use rulers or straight edges. If you don't, you will lose credit because all lines are straight. You will never hear me say, draw a straight line, one, two, three. Okay. Arrowhead right on there, oops. There we go. And there it is. Okay, now let's see what happens when y is not alone. Oh, there's one there you can try on your own. 
Uh, I'm gonna, you can pause the video, try this on your own. I'm gonna do it really quick without telling you a whole lot about it. See if you get the same thing. Okay, here's my solution. I have a y-intercept of negative one, slope of negative one-fourth, slope of down one, right one, two, three, four. That is just a stray mark there, sorry about that. Then down one, right one, two, three, four. If I want a, another point, I could go up one and go left one, two, three, four. There we go. And one, one, two, three, four. Something like that. All right. Stick an arrowhead on there and I'm good to go. All right. Now, let's see what happens when y is not alone. It's real simple. We get y alone. How is the 3 attached to the y? Well, by addition. So we subtract 3 from both sides. All right. So y is going to equal 4x minus 3. Now it's ready to graph. v is going to be the point 0, negative 3. My slope is going to equal the fraction 4 over 1. So I'm going to plot the point 0, negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, run 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, run 1 ready to draw my line. One, two, three, four, one. And there you go. Okay, now we have a situation where y is not alone, but the 2 is attached by multiplication. Some of you are going to have trouble with this because you're going to forget to divide everywhere. I'm going to divide the 2, but I have to distribute my division. So I'm going to have y equals, now I'm going to do this part first, negative 4. Remember I've been telling you not to run to decimals? This is a situation where if you put 1.5, it's foolish. It is way more difficult. I'm going to leave it as 3 over 2x, as long as this is simplified. So my y-intercept is negative 4, 0, negative 4. My slope is going to be 3 over 2. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to rise 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. There's my three points. One, two, three, one, two. And there you go. All right, so a little bit of a longer video, but I needed to go over a little more detail, especially for eighth period, because they didn't get a chance to see this on the graphing calculators. Okay, that's it for the video. Mr. Lord signing off. Good night, everybody.